Good morning. Welcome to the Connect Zone, where we get to navigate the shifts of life with God's Word. My name is Guma Albert, and I'm your host. Really excited that you are tuned in wherever you're watching us from. It could be that you're in your living room, you're in your bedroom, or you're with your couple of friends taking a cup of tea somewhere outside hanging out. Thank you so much for tuning in and being part of the show. And if this is your very first time, for tuning in, we want to say, we're very excited, first of all, that you're tuned in, and we want to say welcome to the family. The Connection is a space for you and I, where we can grow together and reach our God's given potential. Now, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you yourself watching, today is a special one. We're having an amazing conversation. If you haven't even tweeted this, before, uh, tweeted this go ahead on a different platform, tweet it. Go on Facebook, Facebook Connect Zone and say, I am watching right now. And even other different platforms, you can even call in or whatever it is. Please feel free to uh, reach out with the Connect Zone. Today's amazing conversation. We are talking about black and white, the theme that we're having this whole month. But uh, in more specific, we're talking about integrity. Black and white, no gray. And today we're talking about integrity. And with us in studio, with us here today, is my mentor, teacher, but not only that, a physics teacher, <laughs> a physics teacher, not a physics, just not, not only a physics teacher, a lecturer, and a, a, a Sunday school teacher, right? But also she is a youth mentor and a trainer. Ladies and gentlemen, with us is Esther Katate. It's good to have you, Miss Esther. Uh, Thank you. It's always a privilege to have the very best coming to talk to us so we can learn from them. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. Thank uh, you. To just kick us started, yeah? Uh, if you could meet <coughs> any living person for dinner, and this is just an icebreaker question for us, eh? Okay. If you could meet any living person for dinner, who would you pick and why? Oh, a living person. Yes. Uh, can I go international? Yes, you can go international. Okay. Feel free. Because this think, is international. Uh, you <laughs> 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 Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I, I think I would go with um, Taylor Perry. Yeah. I, I like that guy for how he fights for black lives, but also the fact that he has come from scratch mm. to building an empire with his career and not just him, but also ho helping lots of other people. Mm. And then I like um, how he relates to God, mm. uh, based on the fact that he says his mother mm. put this God in him mm. and he has helped him all through right. so i like the way he honors god even as he struggles a long life but also achieves a lot but does not forget god right that's a, that's a good one uh, as, as, as you as you kind of give give your examples i was thinking to myself and i was wondering um who would i pick who would i pick and i've been wrestling with this yeah, very question and there, I'm are like many, <laughs> there are many there are many, there are many to pick yeah, from eh? yeah but we'll go with that one we'll go with terry yes. perry she, uh, uh, and i like the examples that you gave yeah. uh, now that we're talking about black and white uh, hair and saying no gray nothing gray and talking nothing. about particularly integrity okay. if we when you hear the word integrity for you yourself as a person and your life uh, looking through your life as an individual what do you think integrity is and how have you been able to live uh, in regards uh, or in regards to integrity okay <laughs> okay, but I'll start from where you started you from. Say, you say, hey. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's tough when it comes to personal um, issues, right? Yeah. But what you said is um, black and white, mm. no gray areas. Yes. That is, that's integrity. Yeah. I am hot uh, or cold. Mm. I don't want to be warm. Yeah. That, that is my integrity. Yeah. So I look at integrity as um being one complete mm. without 2.3 2.4s no just mm. be a uh, one person who you are when people are watching you is who you are when people are not there mm. okay yeah. and um personally my uh i would say for me it's it's um it's been a a standard of a moral code or a principle that i've had to follow and that standard has been really God's word. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that you say that uh, you have to be a whole. It's like an yeah. integer, a whole. And, uh, and you know, there's this, there's, this, there's, there's this video I was watching sometime. Okay. And uh, this, guy defines, this guy defines integrity as, uh, he defines integrity as, uh, in this sense, uh, the, you aligning your actions with your belief. Mm -hmm. Aligning your actions with your belief, and I, I, in my, I, I can't fail to wonder and think if I was to align my actions with my belief, then where is a space for integrity in that very particular statement? Um, 
first of all, you said beliefs. Yes. It, it begins from there. Yes. What do you believe? Yes. You know, most people believe different things. Mm. But uh, us as Christians, mm. I want to go in that area of Christians, mm. we, we have our, um, the ultimate belief mm. or something that we have to follow mm. and uh, something that has to guide us. Yes. So Great. me, I am thinking yeah. that belief that we have should be the ultimate point of integrity. Right. Doing what it exactly does, says, yeah. Yeah. okay? Uh, no gray areas. If it says you have to be right in this area, this is how you have to behave in this one, this yeah. is what I want you to do in this one, that is what I am supposed to do. Right. I'm not saying it comes easily, but that is what we are called to do. Right. Yeah, and no, no points. No, no points. No. Wha what, would, what would be your definition for integrity? Because there are very many definitions I've had. There's another one that someone has said that uh, the inward, the inward, the inward, uh, the outward, exp the outward expression of the inward experience. What oh, would be, what that's would a nice <laughs> one. <laughs> that would, yeah. what would be your, what would be your um, definition of integrity? I think mine would be uh, having a high standard, mm. uh, let's say, of living, mm. but based on a moral code, mm. or based on principles mm. that are guided mm. from God's word. Mm. Yes, that would, I think I would go with that. That I live life basing on what the Bible says because it's the ultimate um, reference mm. of integrity. Mm. How, uh, uh, how passionate are you in this sense? How passionate are you, ab uh, how passionate are you on self-development or on self-growth? And how have you been able to keep integrity in your in your in, in the quest of personal growth and in all the different areas of your of it could be career or even your uh, your your conduct and your relationship with people how have you improved that growth and how have you kept integrity um one i would say i've made sure that i surround myself with the uh, people of integrity that mm. has been my beginning point mm that I look at my, let's say my friends, mm. or someone I want to be like, mm. and then I bring, I draw claws to mm. them. Mm. In a way, you get to them mm. for <laughs> what you want, mm. okay? And then uh, I, I inquire, mm. I inquire, how have you lived life? Mm. What do I do in this area? Mm. Struggling with this and this, and then they show me what exactly to do. Mm. But also with that, I've come to have accountability partners mm. or persons in mm. my life. Mm. And actually those have held me high. I am mm. not saying that I'm up there. Mm. I've not even reached, I may not even be caught away. Yeah. But I can count myself that I have tried in that area of integrity yeah. because of the people that I am accountable to. Yeah. Uh, if I am struggling with something, mm. I will want them to know because I know they will pray for me, but they will also correct me and rebuke me. I'll give you an example. This one time I, I cheated, okay? Cheat, cheat, like cheating, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, not cheating as in, but uh, you, you know how you can, you, in a taxi, own. just a taxi. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> you know how you can take a taxi and someone, uh, the conductor mm. gives you more mm. balance. Mm. And this money that they give you, you really need it, mm -hmm. okay? Maybe you have a need somewhere mm -hmm. and it has to meet that mm -hmm. need. And when you look at it, and, and especially if these conductors that are so talkative and annoying, mm -hmm. you just say, I'm going to go with this money. You don't give it back. Mm -hmm. So I went and I ate the money anyway. Yeah. But uh, uh, one time I was with my dad. Yeah. He's one of my accountability partners, by the way. Yeah. So I tell him about this ordeal, and he gives me his very experience, but his was different. Right. For him, he had to return the money. Right. And uh, for me, I feel having someone like that helps me to get back on track. Right. A time when they're giving you a bribe, you've asked about career. Right, yeah. Lots of times when we've gone to offices and you have to do something, and they want to give you a bribe. Right. And uh, because you are a Christian and people know you can't do this and that. Right. And also because you know you are accountable to someone, you'll just say no. You right. know what? Yeah. Let me do my job and I go away from right. here. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that um, uh, in, in, in that, in that in career wise, because there are many, there are many, there are many, many of us, uh, young adults and teenagers, we probably think that, uh, and me knowing that you're a lecturer, mm. um, uh, and being at campus knowing that, you know, sometimes you fail a paper. 
right? You fail a paper and you, and you badly want to pass this paper, but this paper is giving you a hard time. Um, and you know, you're like, okay, how about I go? And you know, being in Uganda and the context of Uganda, that, that teachers are not, uh, and this, uh, we have had this commonly, people say this commonly, that teacher, teachers are not paid as much. Yeah. yeah? Uh, haven't you had students who come out to you and say, uh, why, why don't you give me this to pass? Or uh, that I can give you this? How were you able to handle that? Um, one, when my students come in their first year, mm. I, I give them an orientation. I give them an orientation of the subject. I teach physics. Yeah. And uh, it's been quite a hard subject for them when they're coming from the six years to come to their first year. Right. It, they, they come with this mentality, things are very tough and I have to work hard and all that. So in my orientation, I also make it clear to them that I am Christian. I am a child of God. I call sin, sin. And there are some things I cannot do because I am a child of God. And one of them is giving them something they've not worked for. When you want to go and get marks from uh, someone else, well, that is uh, probably that one is up to you. But you cannot come to me and say, Madam, look here, I need to pass this paper. Mm. Please give me this marks. I, I, need, to, I need to make it to 50 because they are pass mark is always a 50 coursework mm. and uh, their tests. Mm. So they want to make a 50 and then they go and, and leave, okay? Mm. But for me, even when it is, uh, okay, now I don't want people to fear me, mm. but the truth is, even if they've, someone has got a 47, mm. why should I give them a 50 when it's a 47? Okay, now I know and they're <laughs> going to hate me for this. Seriously, yeah, because, they will. Because someone getting 48. Yes. And it's only two, for sure. Yeah. Just two. And then they're getting a 50 and they miss a and they, they, they don't get to have a retake. Of course, even uh, in the ethical uh, world or mm. like, like what we are trained as, uh, as lecturers mm. or as teachers, mm. of course you have empathy. I'm not saying I'm not a person of empathy, mm. but I would call the student back. Mm. I would tell them because usually their courseworks are put and they know where they are failing. Mm. And I will tell them, can I give you probably a supplementary, like um, a test or an assignment or something that they can do to account for what they want to get, mm. okay? Yeah. But also, like when you sit in the board of uh, the examination board and then you bring out students and you say, uh, the student has a 48, what do we do about this student? And they've already left, especially if they were finalists. Mm. Uh, there, there are lots of compromises that we make there, mm. but they are made as a board, mm. okay? They are, you're not alone saying, this student has given me money mm. and I need to make them pass. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Uh, that's, 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 that's very interesting to know because usually uh, there are many and we have seen them. Um, me personally being a student and going through school, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've known students who have gotten marks that they didn't really actually work for. And for someone who is claiming to be a Christian, and this is a lecturer who claims to be a Christian, mm -hmm. but they still go ahead and give out those marks, uh, those marks so for someone that has not worked for. Mm -hmm. So the, um, it's w what would, what, what's that one thing that you would tell, that's one thing that you've thrived in, and you would tell your younger self? Um, something that I've thrived in. That and you would I would tell, tell your younger self. Um... I think I would, I would uh, tell young Esther, mm -hmm. stick onto the standards or onto the code that was taught to you. Mm -hmm. Because when you know what the truth is, it would be very hard for you to go off. Mm -hmm. What code is that? Uh, that is where I started in the beginning. Mm -hmm. My parents literally got the Bible and they gave it to me in the hand. Mm -hmm. All that you'll ever need in the world is here. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're doing, please refer to what the Bible says. Mm. So I think I would tell Esther, would you mind following this moral code because it will never let you go astray. Mm. Yeah. It's, um, and and uh, that, that tells me that you were brought up in a, in a Christian family. And being brought up strict. in a Christian family, a strict, we add the word strict, eh? mm. in a strict Christian <laughs> <laughs> with lots of expectations, not from your parents, yeah. but from the society. Actually, from the society is what made it very strict. Yeah. Did, th did that mean that you lived perfectly and, f and you had to follow through every principle My and everything friend. that you had to? Yes. 
Who does that? Because I'm sure someone is watching right now. Who does that? <laughs> Let no one ever lie. Yeah. They can't. No one can. I would be assistant Holy Spirit mm. or assistant Jesus or something like that. Yeah. Okay? I've actually fallen mm. so many times. And actually, when, when, uh, when I have so many mentees, and when they come to me and they tell me, Madam, I want you to be my mentor, teacher Esther, I want you to be my mentor. What I didn't say is, uh, at least I have taught from the zero ages, mm. because I teach Sunday school, mm. and my class is uh, a zero to five, six years. Yeah. That's the class that I teach. But also I teach adults. Yeah. Yes. And I actually also teach mothers, because right. we, we have programs where... Uh, teachers come and they are adults and you have to teach them. Right. So going back to what I was saying is uh, we fail. Right. I have failed. And when someone comes and tells me, I want you to help me on this. I want you to be my mentor. I want you to... I mean, those people are rough because they keep holding us there. And, uh, you know, there are some things you just can't do because people are watching you. Right. Okay? You, you can't go and do this because, you know... If I do this, someone else is going to fall. Right. Not that you wouldn't want to do it. Of course, you want to please the Lord, but I think God understands us even when we fail. Right. But for me, I would say I've been kept there because of those that are following me, right. those that are looking up to me. Right. Okay? So, you fail. There are lots of failures. So many of them. I have failed so many times. Right. But I don't stay there. What, what gives you the, when you fail, what gives you the courage to come up and say, okay, I have failed in this area? Because there's someone watching right now, mm -hmm. and we know that very many of us who have put our principles in place, and we have, you know, this integrity is a very common word. Yeah. We, we say it from, like, even right now you talk to, a, you know, to probably a senior two or a, a grade two, or a grade four, grade six uh, student, they definitely can define for you integrity, mm. spot on from what the dictionary says. Mm. But what the dictionary defines it, and the many definitions that we have, it's not usually how we follow through yeah. on, the, on this very integrity so um, you know what would you tell someone uh, trying to keep up their trying to keep up this integrity trying to keep up the beliefs and not just the beliefs but Christian uh, uh, Christian best beliefs mm. that if when even though they failed even though they failed what would you tell them to kind of uh, help them know that they can actually make it and you know come on the other side uh, I would say first and foremost accept that you have failed Right. And also accept that the, the fact that people can't be perfect, really. So if I have fallen, my major job is not to stay there, but to get up. And that's when I talked about accountability partners. Right. You know, there are times when we, 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 do, we fall, but we don't want to talk about a few things, uh, uh, some of the things we fall in. Let, let me give an example. I've encountered teenagers and uh, young adults that watch porn. Right. You know, when you watch porn in your bed because you have a smartphone and you come out here and you talk about Jesus, you're living a double standard, right? You are hot and cold. You could, are... Could it be that uh, mm. I'm, struggling with, I'm struggling with porn, uh, but I want to really... Because I don't think there's anyone who enjoys... Yes. Who enjoys... That's I, I, where I wanted to come. Yeah. Like... When I have someone I can talk to, mm. it, for me, I feel it becomes easy when you walk this road with other people. So if I am struggling with something like that, I want to come and talk to someone. Right. I want to come and tell them, you see, I am struggling with this. I know it's not right, especially if they won't judge you. Right. That's why I feel you get someone that you're comfortable with, right. but also someone that rebukes you, not just someone that will go with anything that you want. Right. Okay? So come and tell them that this is what I'm struggling with, this is what I have done. It's so hard to come out of some of the habits. Okay? Right. But when they are with you and they help you, pray for you, give you ways of coming out of it, right. it becomes easy. So accept that you are struggling with it, Right. But also, uh, talk to someone. Of course, the first person you talk to is God. But I would also encourage that you talk to someone else, someone mature, or someone that has gone through it, of which so you may not even know if they've gone through it. Right. But uh, find someone you can confide in, someone that is accountable to you, right. and talk to them. That, those are just a few of some of the things you can do. Yep. I'm sure there are lots of them. 
All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Connect Zone. Now, if you're watching right now and following the conversation, we are talking about black and white and no anything like gray, and specifically talking about integrity. And I know it's not usually something that most of us are, uh, you know, are very keen to follow through, but we know the definition, and mo most of us can go out and talk about it and even share, and you know, talk, even, even write, do a presentation about it. But very many of us have struggled and fallen victim of our own principles. Now I hope, I hope as we continue to have this conversation together with Esther, that you will be helped, but not only be helped, know that you can do it. Just like many of us are thriving to attain that level of integrity, just like many of us are thriving to live closer to God, you yourself can be able to do it. Now Esther, yes. I know someone right now, and I, I we're, having a, we're having a conversation when we're coming up with this very particular topic, and so we were sending, we were sending out questionnaires to very many, to very many students okay. uh, who, who are able to send in their questions, and we asked them, what is that one thing that you are struggling with? Yeah, we asked them that very question. And many of them would come out and say, uh, usually I struggle with, uh, and, being, and th this being a youth platform, mm -hmm. uh, many of them are saying, I struggle with uh, uh, one fornication, I struggle with keeping myself pure. Mm -hmm. I have told myself many times that I want to stay pure. I've told myself many times I, I want to stop doing this, but I don't. I, I don't find myself. I don't find myself. Uh, finding my, I don't find myself on the other side. I keep finding myself being a victim of the same thing, mm. right? You as a student, uh, you know, you Esther as a student before, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of your and this could come off very, and please, please feel free, if you, if you feel like uh, me, I'm not going to answer this one, yeah? <laughs> but what, what could be some of your <laughs> guilt, uh, guilt pleasures? <laughs> and you're like, ah, I, I find myself doing this one all the time, but I don't like it. And I want to find myself on the other side of it. Um, mine have mostly been character traits. Mm. Um, things to do with uh, being judgmental. Like I told you, my uh, having grown up in this family, so you want to keep up with what, what they want you to do and what others are expecting from you. And so you become judgmental of others. Yeah. I struggled a lot with that. Right. I struggled a lot with that. And actually, I don't judge people. I want to talk about your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'll not talk about your, your hair, okay. but I, I, I learned to uh, see people the way they are and appreciate them, right. appreciate the good that is in them. I, I'm, I glad, that, I'm a glad, lot. glad that you appreciate me even with my hair. <laughs> Especially because I told you, Guma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I told you in Christian circles. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, eh, my goomba, my goomba, the my hair. goomba. The hair. But the, I will not judge. Okay, we should not so. do that. So. Okay. <laughs> but also I struggled a lot with lying. Right. Yeah, I think lying, I struggled a lot with it. And sometimes it comes back, even at work, when they uh, probably you don't want to go and do something, then you will say, no, I have this other thing that I am going to do. And yet it's really a lie. Right. So I, I, am, I am also a work in progress. I am work in progress. That's why I said I don't think there's anyone that is perfect in integrity. Even when God calls us to be one, to be whole. Right. Yes. What what is what what is your what is your favorite uh, Bible story that has helped you hey. uh, that, has, uh, that has helped you in a sense look at and admire the integrity, but also admire the character that these people had? Um, I have two actually. No, I have. A positive one and a negative one. Yeah, right. The positive one is Genesis 39. Was uh, it 39? Uh, the story of Joseph. Please and, look, uh, look that out. Eh? So are we uh, <laughs> let us know if it is Genesis 39. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's around uh, there. Yeah. Okay, Genesis probably 36, 37, 38, 39. Yeah. But you see, they talk about um, Joseph, especially when he was in the house of Potiphar. Right. And this wife comes out and admires him. And Joseph stands up to his integrity. Right. For me, I think that's an ultimate story for teenagers. Yeah. And uh, all of us that are actually struggling to be right with God and choose to do what is right. right. And then the other negative story. Okay, that one I don't know where it is, but it's in the New Testament. I've forgotten. Is it in the Acts? I don't know. But the story of Sapphira 
how do we call her Safira? Some people say Safira, but I think it is Safira. Depending on which school you went to, yeah. Yes, <laughs> the necessary one. <laughs> but the story of Safira and uh, Ananias. Ananias, yes. Yes, and how they didn't have integrity in what God had given them right. and in their words. Right. Okay? So, and you see the rewards that we get when we have integrity. Right. If you choose to do what is right, there's a reward for it. Right. But also when you go off and you choose to do uh, what is wrong or right. what is bad, there's a still a reward for it. Right. Yes. Is, is, um, and, uh, <coughs> and, you know, uh, guys, if you can check out those very particular scriptures, we are uh, hopefully we can be able to post those on the, on the screen and you'll be able to see them. But uh, the stories are, the stories are uh, you know, in Acts and Genesis. Yes. And, you know, feel free to draw all your own, pri uh, your own principles from those and post them on the Connection page. You can even reach out to us and tell us these are some of the principles that you have, uh, looked, out, uh, you have looked out and you want to, uh, you want to uphold <coughs> those. But also it could be that you're struggling in a way or in any area. Please, the Connect Zone is a platform that has been created for you and I to grow and reach our God-given potential. So, guys, I, I, know I ask that you know, feel free to reach out on the different numbers that will be displayed on the screen. And, you know, Esther, talking about uh, Ananias and, uh, and the story of Joseph mm. uh, and, and saying that there are then uh, the, the payoff of integrity, is there, is there a situation in your own personal life where you had to uphold your integrity and you were rewarded for it? You saw it, you saw, you saw it pay off? Um, yes. Could you, could you share with us that? Um, le let me say at work, I hold a managerial position. Right. And uh, there are things that we do, especially when you make requisitions and you want to buy stuff for the lab, you want to do these excursions and all that. Uh, it's always, uh, y you can choose to you can choose to say, I am going to buy a beaker that is at uh, 40,000 and I'm going to buy it at 150. Right. No one will care. Right. I can even change the name of a laser bread and I call it a uh, botanical name. And well, like Kasata, exactly. <laughs> and I will put a razor that is at, uh, uh, let me say, 100 shillings and I will hike it to 10,000 shillings. Okay? Right. And uh, no one will know really yeah but uh first and foremost when i choose to not do that i get a peace of mind for me you get a peace of mind and the fact that you know that god is happy with you you have not cheated anyone you have not uh chosen to do what you know exactly is wrong right. just to get a gain of uh, probably a two million shillings right you understand you choose to forego you sacrifice what you think you would love, but you get so many other rewards. God right. will give you peace, but also other things will come up. They may not be tangible, right. but you can even land a job where they need uh, people of integrity. Right. You understand? Right. Eh? And we've, we've seen that come through. It may not have come through for me, landing a job, like in the UN. Yeah. You understand? Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, that is where I am going. Right. Okay? But also having a peace of mind, having proper relationship with people, but also telling people, because I lead a group of people at work, right. I'll tell them this is wrong. <laughs> right. This is not how things are done. Right. So they also see in you, uh, they see you as a person of integrity, as a person that is right. They, they won't do stuff that is uh, fishy right. when they're around you. Right. Yes. And, and uh, I'm sure for, her, for everyone who is watching, you can relate with Esther and know that integrity does bring peace. And I can relate with it too. I've also had I've also had my same scenarios in life mm. where I have failed completely, and I've had a lot of unpeaceful moments. Mm. But every time I choose to do something right, especially based on God's principles, mm. uh, God upholding, uh, God giving me the pr uh, the principles, and me being integrity, uh, me being me carrying out the integrity, um, uh, looking at God as the as the ultimate source of my integrity, mm. that gives me uh, some some sense of peace that I've I've never had in any other platform. True. And I know some of us right now are watching and probably you can relate and maybe you have many other questions. Please feel free to go on our Facebook page, Connect Zone, and you can post those, uh, those questions. Even on the YouTube page, you can post those questions and we'll be able to get in touch with you. Ladies and gentlemen, we would love to continue having this conversation. Feel free to reach out, uh, reach out and we will be, we'll get just right in touch with you. We, but for now, we are signing out because we're already out of time. And I'm going to ask Esther to close, uh, to close us with a word of prayer <coughs> as we actually sign out of the Connect Zone.
on as a priest, would you pray for us? Okay, let's pray. Father, we want to thank you so much for this beautiful time that you've given us. With whoever has been watching uh, around the whole world, Lord, we give you praise and honor for that. Lord, we know you have called us to a life of integrity. Proverbs 10, 9 says that he who walks with integrity walks securely. Lord, we pray that even as we go through this life and we uh, live a life uh, that you have called us to, help us to have integrity and to walk in your path. We cannot do it alone, but we trust, Lord, that you are going to help us. So we thank you for this help. Bless us, Lord, even as we go out, he out of here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. I thank you so much for tuning in and being part of the Connect Zone. Until next time, see you.